Hi, uh, this is a little short video, or hopefully fairly short video, <laughs> I'll keep it as short as I can, uh, regarding the Naughty Tech Open 46. Uh, it's in response to a video review uh, posted by uh, Gary from uh, Ilio Hale Productions uh, online, uh, in which he invites people with their, to reply with their comments and their views. I'm not a great typer, I can talk for England, uh, so I'm going to do this as a little video um, and hopefully address some of the points that he makes uh, uh, Gary had a, a three-week charter on a four-cabin version of the 46 uh, in Croatia um, and uh, he raises several points after his charter. They were thinking about buying one of these boats and they decided not to. He raises a lot of points uh, which he's, uh, he's listed in his video and he also <laughs> kindly listed them uh, on one of the uh, forums, uh, cruiser forum. So I printed those off and I'm going to address his points uh, one by one really. Um, I My background is I, I this is my second catamaran. I had a Fontaine Pajot before this. Uh, I, I collected this boat from La Rochelle in April of this year. I've sailed about two and a half thousand miles now. Uh, it's not across oceans, it's all been up and down the coast of England. Uh, we've seen everything from uh, fabulous weather to, uh, to some pretty horrible weather. Um, and yeah, we went up to uh, Wales, Ireland, Southern Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Isle of Man, Scillies. So I've seen kind of pretty much a bit of everything, uh, but not any ocean passages. So I'll leave that to someone else to discuss. Um, so he picked her up in uh, April and I've just been nothing but pleased with her. She's, uh, she's been a terrific boat. Okay, I'm just going to dive straight into this really because uh, I could waffle forever as uh, anybody who's seen me at the show. So that's something else I ought to add actually. I have no financial interest in uh, these boats at all. Um, apart from owning one. Uh, I have worked at the shows for Key Yachting, the UK agents, for several years now, uh, long before I owned this boat. And uh, I thoroughly enjoy just the show buzz and being there, and I do it out of the kindness of my heart. Uh, I'm, I have no I have no financial gain from it. I'm not a salesman. Um, I don't work for the company. So it, these are all just my own views uh, from a very, very enthusiastic owner. Um, Okay, I'm going to dive straight in uh, with Gary's points. He makes, he does, he, he, he spells out his likes first, um, all, most of which I'd agree with actually, <laughs> interestingly, uh, but it's the dislikes that I kind of feel need addressing most. Okay, number one, undersized winches. This ties up with a later comment as well. Uh, undersized winches is, is number one. And number eight, uh, main halyard line and mainsail cars. Overall, main raising and lowering were a disaster with someone required to be on the cabin top to complete either. Totally not acceptable. Okay, the early I don't know what age yeah, the boat that Gary was on was. The earliest boats had the electric winches that they fitted were too small. Um, the later boats they fitted a larger electric winch or more powerful one. My boat doesn't have electric winches. I do everything manually and I get on absolutely fine. And this is mainly down to them addressing point eight, uh, the main halyard and the mainsail cars. The early boats were a single purchase main halyard and non ball bearing cars, mainsail cars. Um, the later boats, mine included, uh, have a double purchase main halyard uh, and the, the mainsail cars are bull rollers, uh, roller bull cars. Uh, it transforms the boat. Um, I can get the main up and down on my own without an electric winch. I have put a clutch on the mast because sometimes it suits me to haul it from there. Uh, to hoist it from there and to drop it from there. Um, it's Sometimes that's more appropriate, but I can do it either way. Um, I can get it from the mast, I can get it about the top two feet before I then have to haul the sheet back, sorry, yeah, the halyard back and finish it off back here. Uh, I might fit a winch on the mast, it's something that Gary mentions, he thinks it's a worthwhile job. I would agree, I think a winch on the mast in any on any situation is useful. Uh, it's just an, it's an added way of doing things. Uh, I have no light wind and downwind sails for this boat, I've only got the standard white sails from the factory. As I add sails, that mast mounted winch might be a thing. Um, but totally non acceptable, absolutely sorted on the later boats. Uh, I really don't have a problem with it. Okay, uh, number two, interior lighting was really poor. Oh, hang on a minute, I'm meant to be running my timer. Um, interior lighting was really poor on many levels, either too bright or not bright enough. There were many dark areas, such as over the galley counters and in the heads. Okay, uh, the later boats, they have dimmers on everywhere. All the lighting has dimmers on, uh, factory standard, they work really well. Um, the lighting over the galley isn't fantastic. I'm going to add some to my boat. I have 
haven't done it yet. Uh, it's one of those jobs I've been meaning to get around to do. Dead easy mod. All the wiring on these boats is really easy to get to. All the panels come down, you can reach everything. So uh, that's going to be a, a job I'll do later. Many dark areas over the galley counters in the heads. Okay, Gary's boat was a charter boat, a four cab version. The head, the owner's head in this boat and shower is fantastic lighting, absolutely brilliant. Um, the guest lighting in the, in the guest side is not so great. Um, it could be improved, again, a fairly easy job to do. Um, I think uh, mostly sorted or very easily sortable. Number three, <clears throat> trim board over the forward galley counter has to go. Head knocker and makes no sense. I'm six foot, uh, I don't have a problem with it, but Having said that, if it is a problem, it's very easy to remove and modify. It's not screwed up or anything like that, it's just glued on. So I think it could be, uh, get, it, your dealer could easily sort it for you. If it was an issue, the factory won't do it. They're a, they're a, a production boat, you get them as they are. Your dealer would be able to sort that for you if you bought one of these boats. Um, it wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, cheap door hardware has to be replaced, number four. Don't understand that. I think the door hardware is great. Uh, I'm presuming he means on the cupboards and things. The, the, well, the, the cabin doors are fine as well. The cupboards, it is like the door hardware, but this is a catamaran, not a, not a monohull. Uh, Gary's background is, is monohulls. On a monohull, when you're going to windward and you're bashing a long length over at 45 degrees, the cupboards have an enormous amount of work to do. The doors are prone to you know coming undone. Uh, on a catamaran, that's not the way they sail. You're sailing flat, the doors have a lot less work to do in, in say, six months and two and a half thousand miles. I've not had a problem, so uh, I think they're fine. Uh, bow cleat locations, lack of protection for line chafe against the fiberglass. Uh, yeah, absolutely agree. Uh, the bow cleats aren't great. You get two cleats, they're a little way further back than would be ideal, or actually no, a good way further back. They're fine for tying up to a dock, but for, uh, or to the pontoon, but for mooring to a, to a uh, anchor buoy, or sorry, to a bull, or to a mooring, they're not great. I've seen a UK boat um, which has pop-up cleats added to the very forward end of the bows, which is a great solution, something I'll add to mind, but I absolutely agree with that. Factory setup, not brilliant. Um, six, amount of opening hatches in the main cabin. The charter boat has only had two forward openings. I understand that newer boats now have some opening hatches in the overhead. Uh, yeah, uh, they have been added. Uh, I have overhead hatches, they're fine. And also something else that's been added, the first boats had this strange inward opening hatches in the forward screen. And they were, A, if it was raining, they didn't keep anything out. You hit your head on them if you were sitting at the, at the, um, in the saloon and uh, they were smaller. The new boats have got outward opening. They're a much, much better solution. So I think those have been addressed really. The ventilation I think is fine. Uh, certainly when you're cooking, you had nowhere on the earlier boats of letting any, any cooking sort of fumes out the top. Uh, now you can. Uh, interestingly, the UK agent, uh, I will keep mentioning because they have been absolutely fantastic to me, uh, Key Yachting in, South, in the Hamble, Southampton. Uh, I know that Certainly two of the 46s they'd sold before the hatches were standard, they went out and retrofitted them. I think it was part of sort of like warranty type work that they did. And actually the same applies to the sail uh, handling system, the ball bearing cars and the double purchase halyard. I believe they did those as part of their follow up. Um, can't swear to it, but I think that's the case. Um, Okay, number seven, main cabin doors were not running smoothly and the sea waves rolling can be dangerous. Uh, these are heavy doors, going through them with a the boat moving was a challenge. It seemed little attention was paid by the factory to make sure that these doors opened smoothly. The main door was hitting against the aft port windowsill. Okay, mine work fine. I've, I know how to adjust them. Uh, again, the agent showed me how to adjust them. They said they may need a little bit of adjusting as they bed in and things sort of like settle down. Uh, Mine haven't needed adjusting, they work absolutely fine. They are heavy. Uh, you need to make sure with those doors they're either catched back or they're catched uh, closed. You don't want them running free in a seaway. Uh, it's, it's, it's not really an issue, it's something you just need to be aware of. Uh, and to me, they work fine. They're good, strong doors. Uh, to me, yes, if you let go of them in the seaway and they get away from you, then yeah, you could be in for a surprise. But um, like a lot of things on a boat, you've got to be aware of you know, the ways they're going to catch you out. And they, that's just a thing with these. Make sure they're catched back, catched open, uh, and just keep a good hold of them. Uh, mine don't hit anything. Mine open and close smoothly. Um, so 
Okay, that was that was the boat that Gary was on. Okay, uh, eight main halyard and mainsail cast. Uh, okay, addressed that earlier. Uh, nine fresh. Oh, this is a good one. Fresh water and sump system noise and general lack of water pressure, plus the length of time required to get hot water to the water outlets. Need a shower in the port hull. Be prepared to waste gallons of water waiting for it to get warm, and then be prepared for a very small trickle of water coming out the shower head. Okay, various things on this. Um, the freshwater pump has now been replaced. The earlier boats, like, they wasn't adequate. The newer boats, mine included, have got a really nice Italian uh, electronic water pump. I've looked at the price of those things. They are a, a whole heap of money. It works really, really well. The water pressure throughout the boat is great. Um, so, and I kind of, I, I, my background is building and, and engineering, so I did a quick bit of sums. Uh, there's about 20 meters of 15 mil pipe between the calorifier and the shower. Um, it, that holds 1.5 liters a meter, so you're looking at roughly three liters of water uh, before your shower goes hot, which is a, not a great deal, I wouldn't have said. Um, it would be nice if there wasn't any, um, but it's not too bad um, but because of the new pump it does arrive really quickly I think you know, within a matter of 10 or 15 seconds you've got hot water there so to me all those have been addressed oh there's the, the um the sump system the these boats have got a gulper pump on them for the showers and for the sinks uh, and they work really well in six months it's it's worked well the noise you don't really notice it I mean when you're having a shower you know I don't it's not a thing that I notice um, so if someone else is using them you can hear the noise it's just a sort of gulping noise in the background but it's a price worth paying for me they work really really well one thing I would say about the uh, heads uh, all the heads that Gary did mention was the outlet for the the tap outlet where the the, uh, the, the, yeah, the outlet is is in a really silly place it's a definite triumph of design over function they um, they ride in the center of the sink you bash your head on them when you're trying to rinse your eyes uh, they're silly um, that's something I'm going to change on my boat either modify the existing ones or changing them um, I don't like them uh, okay number 10 Poor, so I'd say the water system is, has been really well sorted. It works fine now. Number 10, poor installation of the heating system in the cabins and heads. Basically no heat in the heads and very confusing heating system in the cabins where the bilges were hot, the cabins were cold. Absolutely agree. The factory supply system is not great. Uh, when I spec my boat, and I spent very few extras on this boat, I decided to do most of it off my own back at home. Um, the... Uh, the, the system is poor. I've, you know, I've, I've, I've seen it working. I've seen the way they do it. Uh, again, they don't, they don't. It's not actually done by the, the Naughty Tech themselves. It's done. It's outsourced, um, and they keep fitting the same thing. They still fit the same system now, as far as I believe. Uh, my system, I've got uh, a blown air system in each hull and a small hot water system to heat my calorifier, uh, and that for me works really well. Uh, there you go. Don't spec the factory system. Uh, and I'd agree with his comment altogether. Uh, 11. Galley top was horrible with raised wood edges that will just, just get destroyed from use. Horrible caulking lines and poor countertop material that stains and will easily wear. Uh, horrible? No, I wouldn't go so far as that. The raised wood edges are interesting. I don't really understand why they've done that. Again, it's a bit of a triumph of design over function. I, this is my own boat, it's an owner's boat, I look after it, and mine are holding up well, I can see how they could get bashed around, and probably on a charter boat they would. If you're going to buy one of these boats for your own use, then I don't think it's a major issue. The white top is a Corian white top. Um, it does stain quite easily, but it's not irreversible. If you clean it, if you keep on top of it, it works pretty well. Um, and if it does get stained, a little bit of bleach or something eco-friendly, it comes up like new. Um, it certainly won't wear. The top is tough as old boots. I think it's Corian, um, and it, it's yeah. You know, let's say six months of living on the boat, it's looking fine. I quite like a white top because I can tell when it's dirty. Um, so you know, you can look at it. Oh, that needs a good clean. If you have a darker top or a pattern top, then it's quite an issue to see whether it's clean. Uh, which for a fella is not a great thing. So um, for me, it works okay. The caulking, oh, those horrible caulking lines. Okay, the one place on the boat. Craig, that's some interesting tide. <laughs> okay, we're out in Plymouth Sound, by the way. The, 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 uh, the background you can see going backwards and forwards is uh, Plymouth, and uh, we've got sort of wind one direction, tide another, and uh, the boat's swinging around like all catamarans do, so hopefully you're getting to see plenty of background view. Um, okay, uh, yeah, sorry, the caulking on the galley top. Um, 
Yes, that's the one bit I've done already. Uh, actually, well, the, the, the UK agent did it for me. Um, it was done with silicone, and it was a, it looked neat and tidy when I got it, but uh, it pretty soon started showing signs of, of coming loose. So they hooked that out, and they've redone it in Sikaflex. Uh, it's a much better job. Hopefully it'll last. Uh, I'll keep an eye on it. Um, the rest of the caulking in the boat I really like. Okay, uh, where do we get to? Factory, number 13. Factory cooktop and oven were really cheap with no temperature control in the oven, too small, no pan clamps, and just didn't work well. Uh, yeah, I'd agree with that. The, uh, the factory cooktop is, is small. It's a three burner. Um, it's not particularly brilliant. I, and the oven, I don't like at all. Interestingly, golly, that is an interesting bit of time. What's just gone by? Wow, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> crikey, there's a little whirlpool over there. <laughs> the um, okay, the uh, yeah, the hop in the oven, concentrate, John. Uh, yeah, I had the same setup on my last boat, exactly the same. They're made by Eno, they're French, and I don't like them. Um, I knew I wasn't gonna, I thought I wouldn't like them on this boat, and uh, lo and behold, I don't. So, the hop I can live with, the oven I'll probably take out and change. It's one of the things that when I bought the boat, I thought if I need to change that, I will. But yeah, I entirely agree with Gary, they're not great. Um, he says somewhere later, I think, yeah, no pan clamps. Actually, they do have pan clamps. Uh, they should have been supplied on the boat. Mine came with them. I know all the Eno hobs have them with them. Um, they're probably hidden away on the boat, or maybe they've just been lost somewhere. Uh, they should have been there. Um, that was just a, a thing with his boat. Okay, 14, AC electrical system is confusing in terms of controls. Uh, I have a very simple AC system. I don't have air conditioning and I don't have an inverter and I don't have a generator. I do it all with solar panels and batteries. Um, the AC system I have got is dead straightforward. It's easy, I can work it out. Um, I'm not really in a position to comment on that. I, I don't even know whether the, the, on Gary's boat had a factory set up or something that had been done uh, outside. Um, so I don't know. Um, there we go, simple answer to that. 15, the net table was folding and on a high low pedestal but it didn't work from a size standpoint in either folded or open, not very well thought out. Absolutely agree. Uh, I saw, I've seen that on a, on a demo boat. I've also seen it in their spec. I've also seen the price they charge for it. I chose not to have it. Uh, I'll come up with something much better if I feel a need to, but I normally eat out here. Eating out in the, in the uh, cockpit is lovely. You can put the surrounds around the cockpit. I've got heating out here if it's chilly. To me, it's a nice place to eat. Um, you, how many tables do you need on a boat? Um, I might add one in the saloon. As winter day comes on, I might kind of think differently about that. But at the moment, I'm quite happy with what I've got. And I would agree. I think the factory thing is not a particularly well thought out idea. Um, 16, engine and mechanical noise levels in the aft cabin is not acceptable. Uh, Okay, it went into that earlier on. I um, it, I think that's kind of a uh, where your own personal levels fall, and I, I, for me it's fine. 17, steering system. This is an interesting one. Too much play, too heavy, wheels are clumsy. Um, okay, too much play. My boat has, I think about, it's just a, this much, it's not much, 10 degrees maybe of play. The system is a uh, cable with stainless bars that goes from side to side. Um, it's if you if you dial all the play out and you can it gets tighter so to me it's a balance between play and a nice feel i'm happy with the play i've got i'm very happy with the feel um too much too heavy okay on bob's boat when he was showing the engine rooms he had a hydraulic uh, autopilot in that boat um they are to my view they're renowned for being draggy and giving a lot of resistance in the system uh, i have a bng electric autopilot it's way way lighter um, and to me it works really well i i'm very happy with it um, i think those were the two issues that boat would have had uh, wheels are clumsy uh, so they, you can put you can spec the carbonautica wheels for these boats it's in the options they're quite a nice light um sort of fancy looking wheel for me, I, the price wasn't worth it. I'm very happy with what I got, but that is, there, is, there is an option. The wheels are clumsy, yeah, okay. The option is there. Uh, 18, back cushions on interior settees are horrible and not comfortable. I'm kind of, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. The, um, uh, the, they're not great. I think partly I only have, I think I have five people on this boat uh, maximum. I know that Gary had nine on theirs. And, uh, with, it, with boats, I think it's all about finding a nice comfy corner to sit in. And once you all start sitting in a row around a, a, a seat like you've got in these boats, um, it probably isn't so good. 
and I would say the back cushions are they're not fantastic I'll put up with them for the minute as and when they're worn out I'll maybe come up with a better idea uh, or reupholster them or, or restuff them or something but they're okay um, but yeah they're not they're not awesome um, 19 the aft seat in the cockpit is narrow with no comfortable backrest it's quite narrow mine has a very comfy backrest I haven't actually I didn't look on it on Gary's video whether their boat had the backrest on it presumably not um, it's okay uh, 20 access to escape hatches is horrible again and the steps covering them creak and work okay a couple of things there um, the, this is quite a clever system the, the, there's a cassette over the, the um, over the escape hatches the idea being that if ever you're unlucky enough to put the boat on its roof the cassette drops out and there's your escape hatch um, an interesting thing I've, I've heard that uh, in the industry that at the moment escape hatches are still compulsory but as like people have got better and better at building catamarans uh, they're thinking of, of maybe doing away with the hatches this this is what I've heard this is not you know it's kind of just a something that in the industry that I keep hearing um, because they're actually more of a liability than uh, than than the risk of, of flipping and needing to get back in uh, whether that's right or not I don't know um, the Covers, they don't creak and groan on my boat, they're very quiet. They are quite hard to get out if you need to do them without the boat being upside down. Not saying I'm going to experiment with. Um, if you need to take them out, it needs two people to lift them out. I've had mine out, uh, just out of interest to see what was there. Um, when I put them back, I put some sail coat, sort of like the, the silicone PTFE spray around the slidey parts, and they go back in and out a lot easier with that on there. Um, so access to escape hatches is horrible. If you want to use them with the boat the right way up, yeah they're quite tricky to get to if the boat's upside down they'll be very easy to get to because the cassettes will have dropped out they, they, they're pretty heavy they're going to fall out um, so I think that's kind of a I don't know maybe kind of not really understanding the way they work or just wanting to get to them to, if you I suppose if you want to get to them check whether they're leaking or something um, then you have got to lift them out you can do it on your own I have managed it as a two-man job it's pretty easy 21 exterior caulking is poorly done and dirty this will be a maintenance nightmare I just don't agree with that uh, the exterior caulking on my boat is really really tidy um, it's good I've, uh, I've, I'm sort of lucky enough to see a lot of these boats that, that are various ages um, I one of the first naughty techs uh, the, the original key yachting demo boat is still down there in the hand well I looked at that boat when I read this just to go and see it's it's three years old it's not looking brand new but it's not bad um, I think uh, I kind of just don't agree with that really a maintenance nightmare well I, I try and keep my boat clean like I say it's owner's boat I try and keep on top of it um, to me it, it's fine um, okay 22 bow anchor setup only allows one anchor windlass is undersized in my opinion the roller makes it difficult to pull up and lower the bridle and this will not likely fit anchors like Rockner or Mantis um, okay it allows one anchor the anchors on these boats are out on the, uh, the forward cross beam it's not a place you want a whole load of weight in the same way as you don't want the engines pushed all the way to the back of the boat to make more living area um, equally you don't want your anchors you don't want a whole you know, I, I don't think you want two of them dangled up there on the cross beam all the time it's weight in the wrong place um, I've got a 33 kilo rockner on this boat it fits the rollers it fits okay um, I thought I was going to modify the roller straight away but actually having used it and I've anchored a lot now I, I kind of anchor way more than I go into marinas um, it works fine um, I, I might move the roller slightly just to make it fit just a little snugger but say a 33 kilo rock now it fits for me it fits okay uh, Paul at Key Yachting they fitted a Mantis on another boat they supplied and uh, he said that fitted okay as well I haven't seen that boat I'm not going to comment on it but that was his opinion on it um, windlass is undersized um, the worst situation I've been in was in uh, Scotland we were in a lock the wind blew from 180 degrees the direction it wasn't meant to blow in and we ended up on a lee shore in a lock with uh, a really good amount of wind blowing my anchor alarm went off in the middle of the night one of those don't not very happy moments I wasn't happy my girlfriend really really wasn't happy uh, and we had to come out we had to uh, get the anchor up on, on a lee shore it was whistling the wind was absolutely howling the windlass pulled us towards the anchor it got it up okay uh, it worked fine that was the worst situation I've been in with it um, and the roller makes it difficult to pull up another bridle I really don't have an issue with it it works fine um, so maybe that boat was rigged differently to mine <laughs> look what the winds doing now that is interesting um, 
there we go. I, the, the whole setup works good to me. I wouldn't put another anchor on the bow. Uh, I have got an extra anchor on this boat. I've got a spade anchor that lives in a locker with about 20 meters of chain and a good lump of nylon road. And <laughs> we're doing a complete circle. Um, that, uh, that's my solution. I keep that near the centre of the boat in a, in a locker that I'm sitting on top of and uh, if I need to deploy an extra anchor that's where that'll come from. Okay, overall fit in the finish of the boat was not great with gaps in the furniture, joints, poor labels, caulking and so on. Uh, okay, apart from the galley top, I think the caulking's great. And I really think the interior is fantastic on this boat. Uh, I just come back from Southampton show, 10 days of people crawling all over it. And I know shows maybe aren't the best indication of people's genuine thoughts, but people by and large, they really like the interior. I think the fit and finish is great. Um, furniture joints, they're good. I, um, I, I don't understand that. Um, Okay, that's just a difference of opinion. 24, dark wood on the sole looked cheap and showed every speck of dirt. I absolutely agree. I don't like the dark wood sole. I actually have carpet. I've bound and, and fitted loose carpets in this boat for living aboard for me. It's a nice thing to have. My dog likes it. Um, it certainly keeps the dust down. Uh, it was one of the things I didn't like about the boat, the, the dark sole. I think it looks very over designy and I don't like it. Um, they, I believe now the factory offer various options for the uh, cabin sole. Um, I can't swear to it, um, but I think that's right. So uh, maybe there's an option there. That's it, okay. It goes on to must have changes. A lot of these duplicate the stuff in here. I will just quickly go through these. I've got about another eight minutes of video to go. Um, dinghy height on the davits needs to be addressed with better lift and bridle setup. I have made a frame for my dinghy and I would agree. You really, the di you want the dinghy as high as you can get on these boats. So uh, the waves come between the hulls and slap the dinghy badly if it's too low. Um, my setup works well. I think this was an issue with, the, with either the dealer or the charter company. They hadn't really thought it through. Um, yeah, it is important. Um, the main cell halyards and cars, yeah, we've done that. Uh, then the, says actually the complete rethink of the reefing lines. One thing I will say about this boat, you can reef it going downwind. Uh, the main, the shrouds are slightly behind the spreaders. Um, so you can reef going downwind. I didn't realize this to start with. It's something that Paul pointed out to me. Um, and I've tried it several times now and it works really, really well. So reefing downwind is, is a fantastic thing to be able to do. Um, again, the rethink of the reefing lines. If you keep all those turning points well lubed and take care of stuff, then it's, it's okay, it works fine. Uh, again, on a charter boat where it's coming in, going out, coming, going out, I don't suppose there's a time to really focus on keeping everything working nicely. I don't know, I didn't see his boat. Um, fresh water, cooktop, galley head clearance, mirroring guest. DCAC, Danette. Mattresses have to be improved. Buy new aftermarket. Yeah, I've got a really nice topper on my mattresses. I don't like them. They are what they are. I think I think that's kind of not an unusual way to have stuff. Probably in, I don't know, really. I, I, I've got a topper on mine. I might even take the, the cushions off and buy a proper bespoke mattress. I would agree with that. I don't like them. Um, and But I... <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of that age now where I like a really comfy bed. If I was 20, I probably wouldn't mind. Uh, Handhold on cabin top steps. This should be on the forward edge of the mast. Yep, I'm going to fit one of those. Uh, netting needs to be much firmer. I go, okay, mine's fine. Um, maybe it was a commissioning issue. I don't know. Uh, my net, I like it. I think it's, it suits me. It's just about nice. Um, helm protection needs to be improved. The factory bimini was horrible. I haven't got bimini's on my, my boat. I've seen the factory set up. I don't like it. Um, I didn't spec them because at the moment I don't need them. I just need to keep the Cornish rain off my head. So I, um, I, as and when I, if I get down to further down south and I need bimneys, then because uh, I think for the sun that's the main thing, then I'll, I'll, well, I'll draw something up myself and I'll, I'll come up with my own idea. Uh, mainsail outhaul lead aft. Charter boat has no ability to adjust the outhaul. No, I'd agree with that. Um, it's not, I'm not a major sail tweaker. I've never raced around the cans. It's not something I do. Uh, an outhaul to me is another level of complication that I probably, I don't know, I, it could be done. I mean, you could lead something aft for sure. Uh, there's possibility. Uh, double spinnaker halyards with winch in the mast. Went and done that earlier on. Um, Yes, I'd agree. I think a winch on the mast would be a nice thing to have. Uh, certainly once I've got spinnaker up there, then yeah, that would be something I'll do. Uh, electric fresh water flush head. Oh, okay. Electric fresh water flush heads to eliminate head odour. Not specific to the Open 46. Okay, if you're going to flush your heads with fresh water, then a couple of three litres of uh, in the pipes when you're, uh, when you're having your shower, is, that's, the heads are going to be a bigger issue for sure. I flush mine with seawater. Um, 
Bow Anchor set up, done that new door hardware, improve installation in the end rooms. Okay, I think that just about takes everything uh, account. He's got some issues on the way the boat sails uh, and the noise from the hulls. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> The more eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed a subtle change in the background. Uh, yesterday I was neatly sideswiped by Panasonic, who in their infinite wisdom only allow me to record a half an hour of video on my camera at a time. And uh, something I'm well aware of, and I set my timer accordingly, but <laughs> unfortunately I didn't start it till four minutes into the video. So uh, by the time I'd finished and was just beginning to congratulate myself on having done the whole thing in one faultless take, uh, I was actually talking to nobody but myself. So uh, there we go, I didn't realise till I got back and started editing. And and uh, I've realised a few other things that I've, uh, I've messed up as well. So uh, I'll correct those as well. And uh, we'll start afresh. Brand new haircut and off we go. Uh, <laughs> firstly, an apology. I never realised just how fast I talk. Friends have said to me in the past, John, you talk way too fast. And uh, I've always considered them to be um, foolish. But <laughs> apparently not. They're exactly right. So uh, anyway, all I can do is apologise. Uh, new dog, old tricks. Old dog, new tricks. There's nothing much I can do about it. Uh, so we'll just carry on. Uh, okay, firstly, uh, the first thing I skipped neatly by was uh, Gary mentioned in his video, uh, or on his online comments, the, the engine noise uh, and the fact that the engines are underneath the aft bunks. Um, they are. And uh, personally, I don't find it excessive. I can sleep with the engines running. Um, I don't find it a problem. Um, and it, yes, you can hear the engines for sure. You know, it's not a silent installation, um, but it is just, it's, it's kind of just smooth engine noise. It's not a rattling, banging, buzzing noise where everything in the boat vibrates. It's, it's just, it's there. Okay, to give you some idea of the uh, engine noise, this is, uh, where are we? This is motoring uh, six knots, so it's probably about 16, 1800 RPM. Uh, so this is in the saloon, so it's real, real quiet up here, very subdued. Uh, we'll go down into the starboard hull. Um, okay, so this is, I'm not talking any louder in here, this is the, the, uh, the volume we have in here. It's, you can hear it, it's, um, you can hear the engines running for sure, but it's, it's, it's totally tolerable. Um, so there we go, that gives you an idea. Um, what I would say is the boat motors on one engine only about a knot or a knot and a half maybe slower than she does on both engines in calm conditions and uh, that means that if someone's asleep in the port hull and uh, you're motoring on the starboard engine um, then uh, they really don't hear anything it is very very subdued uh, and the other thing about motoring on one engine and you know, it's a common thing to do is uh, you double your fuel economy so that's it, it's kind of a win-win thing for me uh, so that kind of is my solution to that um, what I would say about the engine installation is by having the engines further forward, I mean, there's real benefits to that. Uh, if you push the engines all the way to the stern of the boat, uh, you start putting the weight where you don't want it in a catamaran, and they begin to hobby horse, and that's something that my boat doesn't do. So that's that's you know a huge benefit to that setup. Uh, the other thing is maintenance. Uh, I've, I've looked at very charter-specific catamarans where the accommodation is king, where the engines have been crammed right into the stern of the boat, uh, even to the extent of putting the rudders in front of the props and the engines, which is, you know, it's, it's not the best solution best by a long way. Um, but it means that, <laughs> in Gary's words, you, know, you end up with a maintenance nightmare. Uh, how are you meant to do some of the, you know, the basics on a setup like that? I just beats me. And the, the thought of doing, I don't know, a raw water in Prada or something, you know, out at sea is, is horrifying. So. It becomes a safety issue at that point as well. So, you know, when you're looking at a boat, you've got to kind of weigh it all up. And for me, that compromise is well worth making. Maybe slightly more engine noise in the hull for a, a much easier to live with boat. Um, you always get, you know, the, the engines aren't noisy, you'll get used to that. You won't get used to having to bend yourself double to do everything that you do need to do in the engine room. So there we go, that's that. Um, Okay, uh, twin engine controls. Uh, he mentions that, I'm not sure in the video or in his comments. Uh, yes, twin engine controls, electronic controls, I think absolutely essential. Uh, if you're single-handed, short-handed, you definitely want them. Um, I guess the factory just you know do the single ones on a, a cost basis, and maybe if you're fully crewed, you've got eight or you know six eight people on the boat, it's less important um, to have the twins. But to me, the twin electronic engine controls, one at either helm, absolutely essential. I didn't go for the factory option. I actually uh, fitted myself uh, uh, set up by a firm called Glendinning from America. I much prefer them to what the factory do. Uh, and also the reason I did that was 
uh, by having the boat with the original Morse controls originally, uh, I've left all the cables in and I've kept the Morse head. So that if ever I get Oh, they're struck by lightning or something in some far-flung corner of the world. <laughs> Please no. Um, I can refit uh, that Morse head. It would, you know, two or three hours. I could probably have it all back installed again, and I can carry on without having to wait weeks for spares to arrive. So that was kind of my thinking on that. Uh, but yes, twin engine controls, absolutely. You know, you, you do want them. Uh, okay. Something he mentions more in his comments rather than on the actual video was uh, noise, wave noise, and noise from the bulkheads on the boat he had. Um, Two different well two things really the bulkheads on my boat don't make any noise um i don't know i'm, I'm not sure on that yeah mine are silent uh wave not the sea noise is, is a different thing wave noise um i think uh, catamarans certainly sound very different from monohulls and that again gary's background he says is, is monohulls um and if you sailed monos for 20 years then then a catamaran does sound very different there's no two ways about it um I don't have a. It just all sounds normal to me. You know, there's. It's not excessive. You, it's not continuous banging or slapping. But you do hear. You get a different set of noises from a catamaran. Um, again, it's compromises. Uh, the 46 has full standing headroom and, and plenty of it in the hulls, um, which comes with very high top sides, very high freeboard. Um, which if you're sailing broad uh, beam on to, to waves, occasionally you do get slapped by a wave and you'll know you've been slapped, you can hear it. Uh, it just comes, it's part of selling a catamaran. I, 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 you know, I think it's just you know, common to the breed really. Uh, to me, it's not disconcerting, it's not annoying. Uh, it's just the noise my boat makes. And the longer I sail her, the more I get used to all the noises she makes and I don't really, I don't find it a problem. Uh, and I will say that non-sailing friends who've been on the boat, just you know, guests or you know, come for trips, um, they, they all say the boat feels really secure and calm and you know it's a nice safe feeling boat to be on uh, and I think that is all part of the I guess probably if you're a non-sailing person you know the noises that you hear that you don't go oh what's that it's just you know they're the noises that the boat makes and uh, there you go that's I guess that's just more kind of you know specific to the person that's sailing the boat than the actual boat itself I don't know I don't you know for me it's fine okay uh, that was that um, what else have I got? Oh, I, there's one little clip of video I'm going to put on here. When I was sailing back uh, after making the video, it was a beautiful day, and I don't normally just go and you know, mess around in, out in the sound. I'm normally heading off you know, somewhere, so I, I thought I'd see just how close I could sail to the wind. Uh, I normally say to people if they're asking, I get sort of 55, 50 to the true wind, uh, and around sort of 33 to the apparent. Um, so I thought I'd see what I could do. Uh, and interestingly, I got up, up to uh, 38 to the true, 28 to the apparent, and I was just trundling along nicely in uh, five knots in 10 lots of breeze um which i was quite impressed with really <laughs> i'm no great sailor so uh, i you know I, I just you know i i sort of i make a go along and that's about it really so i was quite impressed with that i didn't think that was too bad something else i will mention about the boat is about half the miles i've done i've done single-handed and uh as a single-handed boat uh, she is absolutely fantastic. She's a really nice platform to work on. The, the twin aft helms, nice and low. Uh, the protection, the, f the level um, uh, deck all around, all around the stern. It all makes for a boat that is really, really nice to single hand. I, I, I really enjoy sailing her like that. Um, so uh, that's probably getting on for it, really. Um, the uh, Yes, I'll just finish off by saying when I saw Gary's video and, and his comments online, I I was just left feeling quite sad, really, because the boat he was sailing was a, uh, it was a charter boat, not an owner's version, which I think it makes a big difference. The owner's hull is absolutely superb to live in. It really is a fabulous space to be in. Um, his boat, I don't think it had had the updates it should have had. I mean, the, you know, I don't know if it's a dealer thing or what it was, really, but they um, the, the sail, things like the sail cars and so on, I think they should have been done. Um, so, But equally, on the new boats, that's all been addressed. So plenty of the things that Gary didn't like are now sorted on the later boats. Um, there's other stuff they didn't like, which would be very simple things to sort um, you know, as an owner. It's things you're going to do. No, no um, off-the-shelf boat is going to be perfect. There's going to be stuff you're going to want to change. But fundamentally, you know, they, they, I think everything's right. All the little things you're going to tweak over the years, uh, you know, over the time you've got the boat, then I think that's that, that boat was missing, really. Um, so, yeah, I just I hope that if you are out there looking for a... Uh, for a uh, long distance cruising cat or a, or a, 
uh, liverboard that you this maybe helps balance things up and you, and you you know you might and you'll consider the naughty tech because they are absolutely great boats i genuinely couldn't be happy with my boat she was a massive financial outlay it wasn't something that was done lightly um and uh, and it was you know you you really, when you're doing something like that you are really hoping for the best but she has, she she does everything I want and I just genuinely couldn't be more pleased with her so uh, there you go I'm going to round that up and say thank you for watching um, I'm going to put a little link at the end of this to Gary's video and to the uh, the forum because without seeing those none of this, none of this will make any sense whatsoever thank you for persevering to the end and uh, and perhaps we'll see you out there sailing sometime or another thank you for watching bye.